So today we're tackling something that I have seen quite a lot of students and young animators do, and that is using too many controllers too early on. I think that is worth its own episode because this issue is so prevalent that I really think that I need to explain why you guys should keep it simple in your animations. So without further ado, let's get to this new episode. How's it going, everybody? Welcome to another week, another Power Tips, right? So this series is sponsored by Autodesk. Thank you so much to Autodesk, as always, for sponsoring the series. And yes, having too many controllers to animate in a character is a problem, especially early on in your career. Later, when you become more experienced, you start to actually know which controllers to use, which ones you shouldn't, or at what stage you should use more controls, right? But animation, as I keep saying in my videos, is really truly all about keeping it simple. And it's the same thing with a rig that has way too many controllers. It can become confusing for a young animator. The natural tendency is for you to just get in there and start playing with all the controllers because they are there after all, and they all do different things. It makes complete sense, I used to do it a lot and I don't blame you if you do. And this is why I decided to make this video for you guys to explain that when it comes to controllers in a character, in a rig, less is more. And this is why. Let's get to it. Right, so as you can see, I have here Woody, this rig is courtesy of Agora community. Shout out to Agora community for doing an amazing job, especially having these awesome rigs. This rig is really cool. And the only reason why I picked this rig is because I've been wanting to play with this rig for a while. I never really got a chance. And now that we're talking about rigs, why not, right? So I played around with it just a tiny bit just to find out how good is it. And having played with it just a tiny bit, I can tell you guys that this is a really good rig. So if you guys want to download it, I'll link it down below um, so you guys can go to Agora community and download this rig for yourselves. Now, I don't have any controllers showcased here, but um, obviously if you go to uh, show and then nerves curves, then this is all the controllers that you have in the rig. So as you can see, there's lots of detail here in this rig. Uh, it looks pretty, pretty, pretty cool. Um, there's so many things that you can do with this rig. So me, as a young animator, this would have made me so happy. And the first thing that I wanna do is go through the rig and try to find out exactly what each controller does and why do I wanna use it. Now, this step is normal for all animators. So even for me, if I download this rig as an experienced guy, I wanna go in and try to kind of like discover the rig, right? Discover what things I can do with this rig and how much I can push my animation. So there's loads of good stuff here. You have the generic uh, IK hands, that, that's cool. Uh, the finger pickers uh, look really, really nice and, and, and straightforward. And they work really nice for all angles and they have a little bit of that like rubber feeling, which is nice, allows you to actually get a little bit more of that cartoony feel. You also have these controllers here that are almost like uh, pink, allows you to kind of like deform the hand further. Another cool feature of this rig is that it has IK fingers. IK fingers are beautiful, I love it. And if you turn it on, then just by deforming the tip of the finger, you can deform the finger and get the finger to do what you want it to do. Which is pretty cool, minimizes the controller, it's awesome. It works pretty much like a leg. That's the whole way you can see it. You have the knee here and then here you can actually move the knee around. Nice feature, really, really awesome. Now, this rig, I can keep going on. Um, it has like a little pouch that you can move around and it feels very much like fabric and, 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 and nice. It has facial controls. The facial controls are very detailed. 
Uh, you can get a lot done with these facial controls. Really, really cool. The hat is deformable. Um, you can have different pivots on the hat, which is pretty nice. So you can actually kind of like pivot the hat through here or here or the tips instead of just having one cog for the whole hat, just like you have it here. Normally that's how it works. Uh, you have the, the head controller, this is standard, and that's much, much more. But we're not here to talk about the rig. <laughs> we are here to find out why minimizing your controls is the best thing for you in the beginning. As an animator, if I'm giving an animation to do, or I actually uh, have planned out my animation, with reference, with ideas, with thumbnails. I know what I want to accomplish in my animation, right? So thinking about your animation, let's say it's body mechanics, right? There's a lot of things that you don't need that are showcased here in this rig that you should hide so you don't see them all the time as you're working on your body mechanics. And this is what I mean about minimizing your controllers because if you showcase all the controllers guaranteed you're going to be very tempted to use controllers that you really don't need to, right? So if I just wanna do body mechanics and if I'm just doing my block out, right? I know for sure that I don't need facial controllers, for example. So all these rigs, they have normally like a controller. It either is a base here or a specific settings controller like this rig, it's really nice, um, or the visibility controller. Normally you have one controller that has everything in it, but in this rig they broke it down really well and they gave you like a visibility controller here that if you click it, you have your channel box and within your channel box, you can see everything that you can hide or show in your rig. And this is a really great way for you to kind of like start hiding things that you really don't need. If you're just blocking out your shot and you're just looking for body mechanics, uh, face visibility is something that you don't need. So you don't need facial controllers for now. You might want to use them at a later point, but for now, you're good to go. Um, eyebrow visibility, that's another thing that, once again, part of the facial controllers, don't need that, that's fine. Let's see, what else can we hide? Hat controllers, we don't need as well. Um, so we can hide those because we really don't want to deform the hat as you're doing the block out just yet, unless you're doing something extreme. But for now, I think it's fine. Um, you do need the head controller, so you can leave that in. Uh, let me see. This pouch here, uh, you really don't need to actually deform it for now because you're gonna do just bottom mechanics. So this is a secondary motion, therefore you can leave it for later. So you can hide that as well. Okay, so that's as many things as I can hide through here that are of interest to me. Now, there's other ways for you to hide other things that perhaps are not useful for you right now. So for example, if I deem, let me just grab this here. I brought this, uh, my display layer visibility. And if I deem that I actually don't want to use my eyes for the time being, I can select all these controllers for the eyes, create a layer and say, uh, name it, uh, hitting controls. Save that and then put those into a layer so you don't see them because you really don't need them right now. So let me see, what else can I do? This little star, this sheriff star, um, I probably don't want to move it right now as I'm blocking my scene. So add those controllers in and then that disappears from the scene. What else we got? Foot controllers are fine. Uh, let's look at these fingers. So for these fingers, um, there's like, um, I want to, I decided that I want to animate my fingers in IK to keep it to the very minimum. And because I'm a big fan of IK fingers. Now, IK fingers are not, is not for everybody, but in this case, I want to minimize my controller. So I have to deal with the least amount of controllers possible to achieve the animation that I want to achieve. So I want my fingers all to be in IK. So I'll go to my IK fingers controller and then activate them all, making sure that all fingers are now IK. Uh, the 
with them. It's not possible to be IK. This controller here, I probably don't want them for now, right? So I want to hide these controllers under my layer, hidden controllers. Put them in there. I don't want to see them. Let's go to the other hand, do the same thing. Go to all these settings on this rig and then go IFK. Go to IK, stay there, and then I'm gonna like select all these controllers right here. Put them under hitting controls and then they disappear. So as you can see that rig is starting to look much more simplified and you have to think about less controllers as you are animating, at least your block out, right? You will bring those controllers back as you need them, as your animation gets better. But for the majority of time, since this is a bottom mechanics piece, this is gonna be the controllers that are gonna give you the foundation of your animation. So let's just see if there's anything else that I can hide that I don't need. Oh yeah, like this thing here looks really cool. I guess allows me to have this much more like fabric moving around, wiggling about, looking really, really cool. I'm guessing this can turn around. That's kind of cool. Let's just see if here in the settings, I have visibility setting. Oh, it gives me even more controls. IK settings for the cloth. That's just awesome. Cool. Anyways, yeah, I only have an option to actually get it FK or IK for the cloth control. Um, but there's nothing here that allows me to just hide it. So, just like we did everything else, we are going to select all these controllers and then put them in our hidden layer. Let's see, this one's as well. And now we don't have to bother about those controllers anymore. Now let's see the neck. What can we do with the neck? Okay, that's all right. And I think we are getting to the absolute minimal amount of things that we can leave out. I'm guessing there is some extra controllers here for the boots, but there's nothing much that we can hide right now. I think this is the main controller for the foot. And then we have these controllers for the boot. Okay, cool. So I think with this, we have a animation, a rig that we can animate and not have to worry about anything else except for the animation. It's the absolute minimum that we need to have in order to get our bases correct and looking good. And yep, this is the absolute minimum of controllers that we need right now to get our bases, our base animation sorted. At this point, I know that I'm safe to actually have just absolutely what I need to animate. So I would actually save the scene right now because I like this setup right now. I have my layer with hidden controllers and I know that I can go to settings, visibility settings, and then unhide certain things as I need them, right? So I'll go to town on this. I will start kind of blocking it out. And then at a later point, I'll start bringing some of those controllers back as I need them. Um, so this will give you a much better scene to start working on and it gives you a much more streamlined uh, way to work. Now, I hope this makes sense to you guys because what happens is when you have an animation scene that especially one that is very complicated, um, you need to start thinking about what the character is doing um, and how he's doing it much more than what controls are you going to use to achieve the action, right? The controllers are there for a purpose, to move the character, to get the character to be in a pose, but they shouldn't be a distraction to your animation. So what I'm trying to say here is that basically use the bare minimum controllers that you can to perform the actions that your shot needs, right? So if you were to do a facial animation only, and there's very little in the body, you will be the reverse of this. You just leave your facial animation controllers on and then you kind of hide the body controllers and then you work on that facial animation because it's the most important thing, let's say a close-up shot, right? And then when you need the body, 
then you bring those those controllers right and you can switch them on right like let's say like you want to animate the body first and then the face do the same thing leave the body hide the face animate the body and then do the opposite right so this is a much more streamlined and better way for you to animate and it simplifies your thought process as you are animating your shots i hope that makes sense to you all um, and I think that's it. I'm going to keep this one short because I think this is an important subject for you guys to digest. This is the very first time that I use this rig. So there might be settings, controllers that I haven't seen or I didn't really touch, but it's a really good rig. Go ahead, give it a try. And if you have any other tips that you want to share with others here in this community, in this channel, then please go ahead, drop a comment down below and let us know how you go about hiding your controllers and how you go about animating with as minimal amount of controllers as possible. And that's all I had for you guys. So as always, many thanks to my Patreons for supporting me on this channel. If you're interested in becoming a patron, then feel free to head over and then check my perks because it's pretty cool. And I give you guys behind the scenes when I can. And also um, I drop videos ahead of time so you guys can watch it before I drop it here on YouTube. So that is all I had for you guys. I hope you guys have a great rest of the week. And until then, stay well, stay safe. Peace.